Isn't Jesus something? Yes. Oh, man. We, we really need a new appreciation for Jesus. Amen. The Bible says at His name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. He's who He says He is, isn't He? He's a lot more than He says He is. He holds this whole thing together. Everything that's created was created by Him and for Him. I want to talk to this young lady right here, this, this lady right here. He says to tell you your prayers have got through. You're, you're a warrior, a real warrior. You had to fight for your family. You had to fight for what God wanted to give you, but you've made it through. Okay? Isn't that something? All right. All right. That's right. I, I, I like warring women. I really mean that. We're going to have to fight for what God wants to give us. The devil will steal everything that you allow him to have. He's a thief. Every time he speaks, he speaks a lie. But he's totally defeated. And it's, it's uh, Luke 10, 19. Jesus said, Behold, observe, look at this. I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and let no wise hurt you. And in those two words, he said, I give you authority to stop the devil's ability. Wow. What ability does the devil have? John 10, 10, the thief comes but far to what? Steal, kill, kill, and destroy. But you and I can defang him, can't we? Uh, Romans 16, 20 said, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. If you look at the Bible and you look what it says about you and the devil, he's always under your feet. You'll tread upon serpents and scorpions. You'll crush Satan under your feet. Isn't that cool? You know why? The Bible said the battle's not yours, it's God's. Amen. Now, be quite frank with you. The devil's not afraid of you, but he's afraid of your elder brother. <laughs> and so you just get so full of Jesus, they can't tell if it's you or Jesus. You know, That's what we've got to do. We've got to walk in the authority God's given us. How much authority has he given us? All power, all authority is given unto me. Wow. And then God said, it's yours. Aren't you glad God's not schizophrenic up there with a whole plethora of plans? <laughs> He's got one plan. He's got one original intent, and that's for you to take over this planet. Wow. Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image, and let's give them kingdom control. God is not vacillated in that one iota. He's still looking for people to take over this planet. Psalms 115, verse 16 says it's your responsibility. Yes. Psalms 115, verse 16 said, the heavens of heavens, that belongs to God, but this earth is your responsibility. Wow. wow. And I'll just tell you quite honest, we need to go to the ballot box, but you're not going to change the world from the ballot box, but from the pulpit. Yeah. It, it's not going to be the White House, but the church house. Yeah. And boy, the church better wake up. Right. There's some crazy things going on out there, isn't there? Yeah. You and I hold the key. That's right. We need That's to start right. praying, yeah. praying, and listen, God has some plans, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, I'm going to talk to you some, about some stuff. You ready? Yeah. I've been preaching 50 years over now, 50 years, and uh, everywhere I go, I offer three questions, and I'm going to offer them before you today. You ready? Yeah. Here it is. Number one. Number one. If not now, when? when? If not here, where? If not you, who? Right. I ask those questions all over the earth. If not now, when? There's never been a better time for revival than now. Amen. Amen. Now is the time. Amen. Ephesians 2, uh, 6 says, now is an acceptable time. Ephesians, Ephesians says it's a time to make the best use of every opportunity. That's what it says. The Bible says that we are to make the very best of every moment of time God's given us. It's not a time to waste time, but we're talking about if not now. Let's talk about now, just for a moment. He says, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, now is an acceptable time. A time of an assured welcome. This is ringing a bit, but that's the way it happens. I could, I could, can y'all hear it ringing? Yeah. Yeah. Ring, ring, are you listening? <laughs> Up in front, Bobby's preaching. Up a little higher. Oh, it'll get under a waddle under there. They can't, <laughs> I will not be able to hear it. What do you think? Good gracious. What do you think? No, no, I was just, I was just uh, seeking, you know, I was awake. What do you do, this guy right here, by the warring woman? I have a handyman business. A handyman business? Oh, I could use you. Oh, man. What do you do, everything? I try. Well, that's good. Well, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled by what we, we said about you. There's some bright times coming, okay? Good. You ought to take Psalms 90 
Oh, Lord, let your works appear and establish thou the works of our hands. If you're a handy man, you ought to have your works established by the Lord. Psalms 90, verse 16 and 17, okay? Let that be a verse. Don't let him forget it. Psalms 90, verse 16 17. Oh, Lord, let your works appear and establish thou the works of our hands, O God. Yes, the works of our hands, establish thou it, and let your glorious majesty be seen by our children. That's what that verse says. Don't you want your children to see the glorious majesty? Well, sure you do. You wouldn't have them in church. You'd have them off some strip club somewhere like that if you're trying to raise a... You, God wants us to raise our children up in the way of the Lord. Yes. Isn't that something? How do we do it? We set the right example. So we're talking about now. If not now, when? There'll never be a better time for revival than right now. Right. Wow. Everybody's looking for answers, aren't they? Yeah. God wants to give them to them through you. Yeah. Isaiah 50 verse 4 says, He will give us the tongue of a taught one. Yeah, he'll give us a tongue of a taught one. We will know how to reply and respond to the people that ask us, how do you navigate these dark, dangerous days? We shouldn't go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll guarantee Rick Jordan, I was doing a television thing with him on uh, prophetic moments or whatever. And here's what he asked me. He said, uh, 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 what's God doing? Yeah. I said, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's taking our question mark and turning it into an exclamation point. Yes. This is not a time to stumble in the dark. This is a time for the saints of God to walk in the light. Yes. That Psalms 36 verse 9 light says, With him is the pathway of life, and in his light we will see light. You know why a lot of us don't see light? We had not got our lamp lit. Psalms 18 verse 28. That's a strange mystical verse. Psalms 18 verse 28 says, He, God, will light my lamp and my lamp will flood my whole life. Amen. Now, let me ask you something. Why do you call it a lamp? A lamp only burns with oil. We got to have oil. Yeah. And remember the, the foolish virgins? They had a lamp, no light. There's a lot of Christians have a lamp, no light. We got to get the oil says, make sure your head never lacks oil. Oil talks about the anointing. Yes. We need the anointing. Amen. You can't get it from somebody that don't have it. Hey! <laughs> That's why we need to get around anointed people. This is an anointed ministry. Amen. I, I, can't ima yeah, I can't imagine been coming 22 years. Good gracious. Isn't that? That's why I like that, though. I really like that. Uh, you know, one time I got a call from a, 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 a black pastor. And at that time, I was going back to places I had already been and was not taking new uh, engagements because we, I like to build a relationship with the people that we come with. Anyway, this pastor called me. He said, uh, Lord said you're coming. I said, no, sir, I don't think I'm coming. Yeah, Lord said you're coming. I said, no, sir, I don't think I'm going to be able to come. He said, the Lord told me you're coming to the conference. I said, okay, now tell me, what's the name of your conference? And here's what he said. You ready? The name of the conference is, you got to be kidding me. I said, I'm coming. <laughs> Anybody that named their conference, you got to be kidding me, I'm coming. Ashkabula, that's where we went to. Wildest place you've ever seen. People hanging off the walls, and you'd give them a verse, a promise from God, they'd all jump up. You got to be kidding me. You know, See, God doesn't kid us, does he? He means what he says and says what he means. Isn't that, that's pretty cool, isn't it? You can trust the word of God. Forever, oh God, thy word is settled in heaven. Back to the three questions. If not now, now's the hottest time for revival. Now's an acceptable time. Now's the time of assured welcome. Now's the time people will hear you. God is really setting the stage of the world, showing us how desperately we need him. They thought economics would do it. They thought education would do it. It won't. The only thing that will fill the hunger of people's heart is Jesus. Yes. And you and I have got to get busy sharing him, don't you think? Yes. Some of you might say, some of you might say, those of you watching, surely nobody in here would say this, but you say, well, I could have and should have, but I'm too old now. Ah, uh -uh. Psalms 92.10 says, you'll be full of sap in your old age. Yes. You will be firm and stable, bearing fruit in your old age. Yes. It says one generation will spend the rest of their time telling the next generation God is everything he says he is. Yes. It says they will laud and applaud the mighty deeds of God. Amen. I, I shared it worldwide. I said there's going to come such a move of God among the senior saints till the millennials will beat a path to their door to set at their feet and drink in the wisdom. And that's happening. Isn't that cool? I don't want to go to a dead church. And uh, you know what a pe preacher told me once? 
Ah, bless his heart. He said, Bobby, I'd be so afraid just to let go and let the Holy Spirit have his way. No telling what would happen. I patted him on the shoulder. I said, I'll tell you precisely what will happen. Jesus will get glorified. Amen. Every, that's what the Holy Spirit will do. Jesus said, John 16, 13, He shall glorify me. He'll take my things, receive, receive them from me, give them to you, and he will glorify me. Anytime the Holy Ghost has his way, Jesus gets glory. Amen. So I, I get to preach all over the world. I've run into some pastors that are afraid of the Holy Ghost. Yes, mm, afraid of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So I got on me a quest. I'm going to find out why are some pastors afraid of the Holy Ghost. Here it is. You ready? You ready? They can't control him. They can grieve him, vex him, quench him, but they can't control him. I'll tell you, listen, we need the Holy Ghost because he's powerful. Every time you find Holy Ghost in the Bible, look real close, you'll find power. Acts 1-8, but you shall receive what? Power! When? After the Holy Ghost comes on you. Then you'll be activated and be a witness. That's one of the things we're going to do. I think we'll do it tomorrow night. We're going to pray for every human being in here. And we're going to release, release activation. It's, you could have a Lamborghini out in the yard. If you don't know where the keys are, you might as well have a horse and buggy. See, you've got a Lamborghini on the inside. I don't, I, did I tell you when they leave? A church leased me one of those Lamborghinis. They had heard one of the messages that I always liked. I'd like fast cars. And they wanted to honor me. So I get there and they had leased a Lamborghini. Now, I, under, I understand what they were doing. Oh, but I wanted a Suburban or something. When I got through with the Lamborghini on the way, I, I, when I left there, I called the place I was going. I said, have me an appointment set up with a chiropractor the moment I get off the plane. <laughs> I, I had to have a, a chiropractic adjustment from the Lamborghini. You don't get in no Lamborghini. You just fall in it. You know. They ought to just run it under you. Listen, I, I know it was, it, 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 it was awful, but... Uh, they were just trying to, you know, yeah, a uh, Lamborghini. Wow. <laughs> you know. they, we were staying in a hotel where we had valet parking, and those guys would nearly get in a fist fight on who was going to park the Lamborghini. <laughs> I'd go, oh, Lord, I hope that thing's insured, you know. <laughs> but anyway, they were trying to be nice. But I'm trying to say to you, uh, why, why have a horse and buggy if, it, if you've got a spiritual Lamborghini? Yeah. You've got all the power. You've got the same power. That was in Jesus. That's right. If the Spirit raised up Christ Jesus from the dead, well, not in you, you're not a His. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit that moved in Jesus. Amen. Why? Why? Because we're supposed to do the same works Jesus That's did. Right. Right. These works I do, the greater works than these. So we're talking about, if not now, now is the time for revival. And now, let's go to the next one. Uh, if not here, where? Amen. I'll tell you what He's going to do with this valley. You want to know? Yeah. Fill this whole valley with the knowledge of the glory of His Son. That's right. You watch this. You watch this. God is, God is about to flood hungry people with the presence of God. Amen. I told you the last time I was here, the next great move of God will all be about all about His presence. Amen. See, in His presence is fullness of joy. In His presence is great joy and peace and power. So He's going to teach us how to get into His presence and how to let His presence get into us. Wow. And so it's going to be something. The Bible says he's going to fill this whole earth with the knowledge of his son. I prophesied to you the last time I was here. I said, this ministry here is Isaiah 40, 3 through 5. The voice of one in the wilderness crying, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway. Lower every mountain, fill in every valley. Make the crooked way straight. Put the stumbling stones aside and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together because the mouth of the Lord has declared it. So this is, this is, that's what he's going to do. Okay, if not now, when? If not here, there's no, nothing that would disqualify this place from having an outpouring of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. I believe it's prophesied and promised that God's going to pour, pour out his spirit in an awesome way, in a way we've not experienced and expected. I want you to get that. One of the things that keep you from getting what God wants to give you is thinking you already got it. <laughs> Uh, th that's what it says. The Bible says, be, get the people ready. We've never been where we're going now. Yeah. God likes to do new things, don't you think? Yeah. Yes, he does. 
That's what it says. Isaiah, what, 48, verse 6 and 7? That's what it says. I do a new thing. It's new now and not prior to now, so no one would be blase about it. How's this new thing? It's brought into being, according to the Bible, by the prophetic word. That's what it says, and that's why Joe, Pastor Joe keeps bringing in prophetic people. It brings in the new move of God, Isaiah 48, verse 6 and 7. It won't come any other way. Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord will do nothing but reveal His secrets to His servants, the prophets. Amos 3, 7. I like Amos 3, 8, too. It says, a lion has roared in the streets. Who can but prophesy? And boy, I'll tell you what, we're going to learn a lot about soaring and roaring in the days to come. We're going to learn about how to soar above the chaos and confusion of this world. I promise you that. But anyway, we're, okay, so we already have understood uh, there's a great need now for revival. There's nothing in the way that could stop it from being here geographical. Places are really important in the Bible. Have you ever read Acts chapter 2, verse 1? Acts chapter 2, verse 1 says, They were all in one. No, they were all in one place. Whoa! Why were they in that place? All the way back in Luke, Jesus was talking once and just a, kind of like a byline. He said, oh, and by the way, go tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued with power. So you better have an ear open to hear what Jesus is prophesying so you've been in the right place for the right reason. So I, I, I believe you're in the right place for the right reason. Go tarry in Jerusalem. What if they go, ah, oh, man, I don't like that. Too many camels. <laughs> I'm telling you, we've got to be obedient to where God wants us to go to get what God wants us to give. They were all in one place in one accord, and then suddenly the promise was fulfilled. And I'm telling you, God's going to shock us with the reality of His new move. I don't know where we got this, but we, we feel like that, uh, oh, well, I've heard it so long, I don't know if it's going to happen. Oh, listen, don't you let the devil steal your hope. Hebrews 10, 35 says, don't fling away your steadfast confidence in God because your steadfast confidence in God brings with it a great recompense of hope, a recompense of reward. One translation says, hang on to hope. It pays big dividends. The devil will do everything he can to get you to just give up. Look how long it's been. Look, you did this and you did that and look. And this is Daniel 7, 25 and 24 and 25. When, when you hear voices like that, well, you've believed so long, look, nothing ever happened. That's the devil attempting to wear you out by accusing God. Daniel 7, 24 and 25. It says he will attempt to wear out the saints of God by accusing God. Wow. Yeah. See, that's how the devil always works. He hadn't changed his operation one iota. He always assaults the validity, of, the validity of God. Remember what he said? Hath God said? And did he really say? Listen, he tries to cast a shadow on what God said. Listen, guys, you and I can believe what God said. Heaven and earth to pass away, but the word of God will stand. Forever, O oh God, thy word is settled in heaven. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but God's word will stand. It's a firm foundation, isn't it? No firmer foundation can any man lay than that which is laying in Christ. Christ is a cornerstone. He's a, listen, listen, he is absolutely who he says he is. You can't make the claims Jesus Christ made and not be who you are. Listen, isn't that, he said, I am God. Well, oh, he is too, isn't he? Yes, he he is. is. He's God manifested what? In the flesh. That's, that's what he says. Wow, so you can't see God till you see him in the form he chooses to reveal himself. Isn't it? Colossians 1.15. Colossians 1.15 says he is, Christ is the express image of the invisible God. What does it mean if you're invisible? What does it mean if something is invisible? Supernatural. You can't see it. You can't see it. He said, I am the express image of the invisible God. Wow. Means you can't see him till you see him in the form he chooses to reveal himself. And you go all the way back to the prophecy with Joseph and Mary, and you shall have a son, and you shall name him Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. If you're going to see God, you have to see him through Jesus. He said, no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. Now that's going to mess up a whole bunch of religions right there. You can't come to God through Allah. Nope. Now you, you can't. Allah's not God. Allah's a demon. Now he is. I'm, I can, okay. <laughs> Acts 4.12 says, neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name. Right. Now some of these 
these guys keep saying that, Bobby, it doesn't matter what you believe, just as long as you're sincere. Are you insane? <laughs> it does matter what you believe. I've had them say, we're all striving to go to the same place. I am not going where Hindus going. I am not going where Muslims going. I'm going to heaven. Yes. Heaven's prepared for people that are prepared for it. And you don't get to come back and do a mulligan. You know, some of these religions believe in, you know, you come back as a hog, a dog, a log, you know, if you, did, if you didn't make it the first shot, you get a next one. No, it's appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment. You ain't coming back for a do-over. If you don't make it now, uh, listen. And how do you know you're going to make it? Well, I'll tell you, brother, I don't guess you know what kind of ministry I got. You don't have one as good as Judas. He didn't make it. He had part and lot in the ministry. That means he did the same thing the disciples did, but he didn't know Jesus. He, Jesus called him a devil. So I'm telling you, you can't, remember in the book of Matthew, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. In your name, we've done many wonderful miracles. And Jesus said, depart from me, I didn't know never met you. Wow. We've got to make sure, hadn't we? You say, well, I'm, I've been baptized, christened, sprinkled, confirmed. All of that's okay, but none of it's regeneration. You must be what? Now, don't pull a Nicodemus on me. No. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. What in the heck does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It meant he kept 480 Levitical laws a day. It meant he could quote the first five books of the Bible. And then he came to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher come from God. Nobody can pull these miracles off there except God be with him. And Jesus said to Nick, Nick, you must be born again. And Nick throws in the intellect. Huh? <laughs> what? You mean I've got to enter a second time into mommy's tummy? He says, marvel not. That means quit attempting to use human intellectuality to form spiritual principle. Because the natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit. It's food. You cannot understand the smallest thing from God naturally. The natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit. It has to be spiritually ingested, doesn't it? That's right. So he said, marvel not that I say unto thee, quit attempting to figure out spiritual principles. And so you must be born again. Let me ask you this. Are you born again tonight? Yes. If your heart stopped, if this was the night that your heart stopped, and listen, the Bible says, boast not yourself tomorrow, you have no comprehension what one day will bring. Wow. It says our days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. Wow. Wow. That's pretty fast, isn't it? So we've got to make sure Make sure we're born again. You go, well, how does that happen? I was a Christian when I was young. That's okay, but that's not it. There's got to be a time the Holy Spirit wooed you and revealed to you your sin and your desperate need of Christ. You can't get saved till you first get lost. You understand that? That's why we need to preach the gospel. So when we really show people the penalty for sin is death, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Wow, every one of us are under the sentence of death till we come to Jesus Christ and we're born again. We've given new life in Christ. Amen. If you've been born again, you'll know it. Well, I hope I have. that ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. You've got to know for sure that we know we pass from death into life. Wow. Listen, just if you really, if you really get into it, that life is more real than this one. Amen. This one's temporary. That one's eternal. Paul said, we look at what you can't see. What you see is temporary. This is temporary. Those pot plants are temporary. But we look at something that's permanent. The things he said is permanent. Aren't you glad? Don't, we're living for eternity. Aren't you glad? This life is temporal. You say, well, man, all I want to do is get a whole bunch of money. Ask Solomon how that worked out. Solomon got everything the world says to make you happy. Had so many women, he couldn't even name them. <laughs> Yeah, had all the money you could imagine, couldn't even count it. And here's what he said about it, empty, empty, that's what he says. Vanity of vanity. He got right where it says the world, that if you get it, you'll be happy. And he said, it's empty. He used the word vanity, which means a word attempting to catch the wind. If you want to learn the word vanity, do your hand like that and then open it. That's the word vanity, it means empty-handed, nothing. And I'll tell you, I know a lot of people attempting that. If I get a bigger car, I'll be happy. If I get a new husband, I'll be happy. Yeah, if I get a baby, you know, a good-looking babe. No, nah, no, nah, those are temporary things. Those are not eternal things. I've had people say, well, listen, 
I, I'm, I'm really busy now making my wealth. And then when later I give my life to Jesus. You know what Jesus calls that person? A fool. Yeah. Thou fool, this night your soul is required of thee. Wow. Wow. That's pretty strange, isn't it? Jesus used that word, you, thou fool, this night your soul will be required of thee. And then whose will these things be? Let's be living for eternity, not for the temporal. I know you want that. You wouldn't be in a Friday night service. That's right. You're here because you go, I want to make every moment count. If not, now when? If not, here, where? If not, you who? Let's, that's the question we've got to work on tonight. You go, oh man, if I lived in Wigglesworth there, or A.A. Allen's there, William Brandon's there, you didn't, you're living now. And God has entrusted you in the most touchy times to be at the helm. You know why? You realize you can't do it without Him. You realize you cannot do a single thing without Him. But you have bought into what He said, Philippians 4.13. I'll just read it for you if you want to. That'll be good. It, Philippians, say Philippians. Philippians. 4.13. It, it's, a, it's a gorgeous verse. Look what it says. Philippians 4.13. I have strength for all things. What? I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficiency in I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiencies. Amen. Everything you need, you have through Christ. Amen. He would be unjust to give you a task without a touch. An assignment without an anointing. Everything you need, you have. That's, that's, that's Colossians. You want to see it? Yes, you're real close. Just turn right. You'll find it. Colossians, listen to it. Colossians chapter uh, uh, 2. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, For in Christ the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression to the divine nature. Verse 10, And you are in Him made what? Full and have come to fullness of life in Christ. You too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and have reached full spiritual stature, and He is the head of all the rule and authority. Wow, we've got to find out who we are. Colossians 2.9 says, All that God is, is in Christ. Colossians 2.10 says, All that Christ is, is in you. We've got to get rid of stinking thinking. Yeah. We've got to understand who we are and what assignment we've got. What assignment do we have? We've got to tell everybody we come in contact the gospel. We've got to, God said, I would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of Christ. How shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? We've got to be busy telling the gospel. Look up the word gospel. It means the good, good news that makes you jump up and down when you hear it. Yeah. See, the devil has told us a lie about the gospel. He said now, I don't, 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 don't push too hard on these lost people. That's what a preacher told me. A preacher told me one time, said, Bobby, I don't think we ought to be so aggressive winning the lost. I said, why? He said, I I'm afraid if we come on too strong, we'll run them away. I said, where are we going to run them? Hell one, hell two, they're lost. <laughs> they ain't know where to run them. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> God said, if I tell you to warn the wicked man of his wicked way and you don't do it and he dies, his blood will I require at your hands. We're accountable for every lost sinner. Now, I want us to be more, a little more aggressive so winning. Yes. Well, you know, I don't want to offend him. Go ahead. The gospel, you know, listen, apparently it's pretty offensive. Paul said, I was in peril of the deep, peril of robbers. Yeah, peril of false brothers, peril. That means... My life is threatened every moment. I've been shot at and I, it's crazy stuff. But listen, I'm still kicking. Yeah. Listen, no weapon, Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Looking good. <laughs> it could be a chipmunk under that thing. <laughs> what do you think? How you been? Good. Me too. I tell you what, busy, oh Lord, this week I go to uh, Ohio, then I go to, uh, I go to uh, New Jersey with uh, Chuck Pierce, and then I go from New Jersey to New Jersey. I go to two places there in New Jersey. Well, busy as we could be, but boy, what a day. God is up to something. You say, well, Bobby, why has he let us live? 
Why, why is this our time? Because we finally embrace John 15, 5. John 15, 5 says, without him, we can't do anything. But with him, we can. He, I asked him one time, I said, God, why have you let us live in such an important time in history? And it is the most important time. Yes, it it's Romans, uh, what, 13, 11? That knowing what a critical, crucial hour this is. Romans 13, 11, you'll find it. But anyway, it's pretty wild. So I said, Lord, why have you chosen us? He said, I've chosen this generation because they've embraced it, John 15, 5. Without him, we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. He said, I've chosen because of their weakness. Amen. I finally found me a people weak enough to work in. Hallelujah. Weak in our own ability, weak in our own... It's just that we know we can't do it, but he can. Amen. His strength is made perfect in our what? Frailty and weakness. <laughs> That's right. So you're doing good? Good to see you. I saw you up here. You about to bust a move when they was praising. <laughs> they, you know, it's okay. Woo, man. I want you to understand something. When the Holy Ghost comes, uh, th there's joy. Yeah. There's strength. When the Holy Ghost comes, you can do things you never dreamed of doing. Can I tell you one of the times? I may have told you before. I was in a coliseum with Bob Jones preaching, and Bob was sitting here on the front, and I was supposed to be preaching, but I got to feeling athletic. <laughs> and so I ran and jumped on the chair. I jumped right here on this part of the chair, and I was still stable, so I jumped on this part. Whoa. And I'm still stable as Dorothy Hamill. What's that little bias girl that can do all them flips? Oh, I was yeah. as stable as she was. Bio. So I thought, yeah, I thought, I'll jump here. Uh -oh. And I jumped right here and stable. I jumped 18 rows wow. on landing on these things right here. 18 rows out across this Coliseum. Isn't that crazy? That is supernatural. Yes. You think you can do it? Give it a hop. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely happened. 18 rows right out in the, and I fell right in the middle of a bunch of rich looking black people. Here's what they said. Are you okay? I said, probably not. <laughs> but it's fun. It was fun. I'm telling you, when the supernatural comes, you can do stuff. I levitated out in Argentina. I was in a basketball arena preaching, and uh, I told Rick Joyner, I said, I'm going to be 12 or 15 feet in the air, standing on nothing, prophesying to people. It would have probably happened then, but I, it scared me. I was, up there, I was up there in the basketball arena, and I was preaching. had my hands on the pulpit like this. I was preaching about glory. And all of a sudden, I felt absolutely weightless. And I looked. I was up about this high. So I grabbed the pulpit and fell down. They went nuts. About two, th two hours, they ran forward throwing backpacks, billfolds, Bibles, screaming, glory, adios. You know, I, go, I told her, I said, I hope they know whose step this is, you know. But it stunned them. But we need something that'll show the people God's who he says he is. Now, I don't believe that jump pews and all that, but we need to live such a life that is supernatural. Everything about Jesus was supernatural. And we need to make the supernatural natural. Don't you think? And God wants you to perform miracles. He said, these works that I do and greater works you will do. You go, no, 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 no. We said, not, if not here, where? If not now, when? If not you, who? You're, you're his representatives. He's anointed you with power for these times. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says now. Now, 2 Corinthians 3.20. Well, I like 2 Corinthians 3.18. It says, as we behold him with an unveiled face, we're changed from one dimension of glory to the next. But 2 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians 5.20 says, now are we. Now are we ambassadors for Christ. We're sent out with the same commission Christ had to make an invisible God known. You can do it. You can. Yes, you can. <laughs> You Listen, one of the ways God is speaking to his people now is dreams. The night seasons are alive with dreams. Yeah. It says in the book of Job, I spoke to you and I spoke to you. You didn't even think it was me. I feel what I'm saying in a dream. Have you studied the Bible about dreams? Listen, Mary would have been divorced. Jesus would have been assassinated if it hadn't been for a dream. <laughs> we need to understand dreams are important. Right. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons dreams are important, because there's so many manip manipulators out there. Yeah. So God can be speaking to you and then speak to you in a dream and clarify what he's been saying. Don't you ever let anybody say to you, well, I have to hear God for you. You're so dense, you can't hear God. Somebody's trying to put you under uh, a bear, a, a bondage. 
You can hear God for yourself. John 10, 3 said, my sheep hear my voice. Don't ever say, you know, and they, I've heard preachers say, no, listen, you know, you're so immature. I'm the shepherd of this flock. I must listen and hear God for, no, no. My job is to work myself out of a job. <laughs> Ephesians, you know, the, Ephesians 4, the, the functioning fivefold. But anyway, I want to you to know who you are. You're one, very important to be living in this last day generation. And God wants you to make every moment count. Amen. Now, you can win somebody that nobody else can win. Now, let me tell you who you need to win first. You ready? You're not going to like it. We ought to target our own family. Yeah. Hardest person you'll ever witness to is your own family. Yeah. Do you know why? They know you. So we've got to live a life before we can use our lips. Yeah. We'll preach a lot better message with our life than our lips. Yeah. But I want us to do both. I want us to live the lifestyle and preach the message. And do it to your friends and your family. Wow, pretty hard to do. You, you say, <clears throat> I, I got to talk to you about something. And you tell them about the treasure of who Jesus really is. If you look at, the, if you look at what, what they're offered, the world offers them death, hell, destruction, doubt, doom, and here's Jesus. And we come and we give him all the death all the doom, all the, and he gives us glory. It's the best deal in town. Amen. What is it, game show? Come on down, I got a deal for you. You, know. you give him your sin, your sorrow, and he gives you his peace and his love. It's the, best, it's the best exchange in the world. And he paid for our sins. Have you read that verse in 1 Peter where it says, you're not, re, you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as gold and silver, but with the precious Look up the Greek word precious. We don't even have one for it. It's a word called incalculable. That means it's so valuable, so precious, so costly, you can't put a value on it, the blood of Jesus. And then God freely shed it for us. Whew, wow. Because the devil will go, who do you think you are? You need to say, I'm precious to Almighty God. He calls you a treasure in his word. He said, when I come to take up my treasures, I looked up the word treasure. It's a Hebrew word. It means specially acquired. He calls you a jewel. It's a specially acquired treasure. We'd say it this way. What you would save in your house if your house was burning. The thing you love the most. That's what God says you are. Wow. Wow. You're his jewel. His specially acquired treasure. We've got to get to thinking about ourselves like God thinks about us. He thinks you're irresistible. I was reading the Song of Solomon. Says, he says, turn your eye away. One glance of your eye ravished my heart. Wow. One glance of our eye ravished his heart. So he, he, he sees you irresistible. Aren't you glad? Yes. See, and the devil tries to tell you stuff like this. God don't think about you. He's lying. Yes. I read Psalm 139, verse 18. Verse 16, 17, 18, it says there in verse 16, 17, God's thoughts towards us are weighty and precious. Yeah. The word weighty is the word for glorious. God's thoughts towards us are glorious. Verse 18 says, and these glorious thoughts God thinks towards us are more numerous than the sands on the seashore. Yeah. Wow. So what does that say? Almighty God thinks continually good things for you. If you th let's just shortcut it, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know my thoughts, I think, towards you, declares the Lord. Thoughts of your success, not your failure. My intention is to bring you to a good end, not a dismal demise. God's plans are always better than we'd ever make for ourselves. Okay, so if not now, when? If not you, who? If not here, why? Listen, God, God can do anything. And I want you to expect a mighty revival to come to this region. Yes. Pastor Joe picked us up last night, driving us in, the lights of the valley. God's going to fill this place with his glory. People will be flooding out of these cities to come to this place. It won't be long. You'll be having church five days a week. I know that's scary, but you ask. Uh, yeah, I've seen it happen. Yeah, I've seen it happen. Yeah, one guy, he said he had four old ladies in church. He had 40 people. Now he's got, I don't know how many thousands. Has church four days a week. Gives them one day off. Trying to get them in. Claudio Frison. Isn't that something? I'm telling you, there'll, there'll be days when you'll have continuous service. So you better get ready. Hey, if the 
If the footman have wore you out, what are you going to do when the horses come? <laughs> if you're pooped out now. Listen, you can renew your strength. Now, t- tomorrow night, uh, on, for, for 25 years, on the Day of Atonement, I have a visitation from Jesus Christ. He'll come tell me some of the things that's going to happen in the future. I write in the shepherd's yard. This is one. This is volume 25. This is for this year. God says, I want you to teach my people how to walk on the wings of the wind. How to, I, yeah, how to walk on the wings of the wind. I, let me just, now, all of this is true. Don't you lie in church. <laughs> you, you remember Ananias the fire dropped dead in church? I want you to just listen to this, if you don't mind. Uh, let me find the introduction here. It's the wildest thing. Okay, so you write them a year in advance. This is a, you get it a year in advance. This is a shepherd's rod for 2020. Here it is. Preface, is that it? Page 21. God releases a sign in the heavens, a mass migration. It is September the 30th, 2019. I'm sitting quietly in my office in Moravian Falls, North Carolina, prayerfully preparing my heart to be attuned to receive God's guidance for the theme and the thrust of this year's shepherd's rod. The deep, heartfelt cry of my heart and soul is, Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. 1 Samuel 3, verse 9. Suddenly and extremely clear, suddenly and extremely clear, the Holy Spirit powerfully declared, equip and prepare God's people to soar higher. Instruct them on how to walk on the wings of the wind. Teach them how to soar above the chaos and the confusion of these days. Okay, I'm up in Moravian Falls. I'm just, well, I'll just read this. Listen to me. I will show you how to synchronize everything God does. Let me assure you of this fact. This was from a firm command, not a mere suggestion. Somewhat stunned by the swift commission, I pondered what this could mean and how how to implement and execute it when suddenly my phone rang. So, God is so awesome. This is truly amazing. At this precise moment, I finished, as I finished typing these words, instruct the saints how to soar above the chaos and the confusion of these days, how to walk on the wings of the wind. My son, Sean Paul, he works for us. He's down in uh, uh, Texas. I'm up in Moravian Falls, sitting at a desk. He calls me. Now, here it is. My son, Sean Paul, FaceTimed me from Texas saying, I've never seen anything like this. Thousands of hawks are soaring and spiraling above my house. Then Sean said, these hawks are soaring on the wings of the wind. You might see that one in, once in a lifetime, these guys that studied it kind of things. Sean's descriptions of the hawk soaring on the wings of the winds was truly stunning and also comp- confirmation at the same time. As I observed and watched this, he, he FaceTimed him. I watched him by the thousands of thousands swirling in the air. The moment I finished typing, my phone rang. It's pretty wild. As I observed and watched these thousands of majestic birds uh, on Sean's FaceTime, I was truly shocked and amazed as I witnessed this mass migration of these powerful birds. To observe something like this is extremely rare. It might uh, happen in one, once in a lifetime. A single hawk, uh, they, they, they can catch the thermals and they can soar on the wings of the wind and don't even have to expend, extend any energy. God said, I'm going to teach my people how to soar, how to soar above the chaos. There's a chaos now. You can feel it in the earth, can't you? There's 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 all kind of crazy stuff happening, and God's going to teach us how to soar. That's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow night. I'm going to talk about how how to position yourself to mount up on wings as of eagles, how to find the thermals. Those hawks find thermals. And thermals change change in the atmosphere as a thermal. And that's where the wind currents come. And God's going to show you how to find his changes in the spirit and how to soar on the wind and walk on the wings of the wind. Boy, Heidi, and you need to get it. The number one thing he told me, though, he says, I don't care how high they soar. It'll be useless if they don't have a firm foundation. The number one priority in our lives is making sure we got a firm foundation. He's going to get us to soar so we can come back and roar. And we've got, we've got to have a firm foundation. So I hope you'll get the shepherd's rod, maybe study it tonight. We'll sign the thing after a while. But listen, it's pretty wild. You say, well, Bobby, I, I don't want to get any of that. No, we need to know what God's doing and join him. And I tell you, God wants us to mount up with wings as of eagles, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint. How do we do it? They that wait upon the Lord. So we're going to have to make him our top priority. Seeking him, seeking his counsel. Matthew 6, 6 says, first thing do, get in the quietest room of your house and shut the door. Psalms 46, 10, 11 says, be still and know that I am God. 
The devil will do everything he can to get you busy. <sighs> I'm so exhausted. No, no. <laughs> Seek him first. Don't wait till the end of day. Yeah. You'll be so cluttered you won't know whether you're hanging wallpaper or making the bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? How you doing? Good. What's your name? Mickey. I ought to draw you something in this book. Can I draw you something in this book? Oh, Why, sure. It'll be good for you. You ready? Sure. All right. Good. There it is. Be happy. All the money in the world can't do that for her, but God can. All the money in the world can't make happy, but Jesus can. You're gonna, his presence is going to get around you, Psalm 1611, and that's where, his pre, that's where the joy comes from. Isn't that good? And he's going to make you so happy. You, listen, we ought to be so happy the world wonders what we're on. <laughs> we shouldn't have to lay there and go, well, you know, I don't know what everybody's so excited about. Listen, you ought to outrun them all, okay? Just outrun them all. So be, be the happiest one in the house. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can. You can. I can show you in prison. Paul and Silas did what? Pray and sing praises. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what they sang. It must have been captivating. It got God's attention, didn't it? As they prayed and sang praises, what? At midnight. At midnight? What? Wow. An earthquake came. Yeah. Who sent the earthquake? God. And it says every prisoner's bands were broken. Wow. And then the jailer was going to kill himself, remember that? Because yeah. back then if you lost your prisoners, you had to dig. So he stuck his sword, you, they would commit suicide, putting the sword on the heart and do it like that. And just as this jailer, this is the same jailer who beat them with stripes and back, made their backs bleed the night before. And Paul says, hold it, don't do it. Do yourself no harm. We're all still here. Wow, I can't believe that. All still here. That means every person in the jail didn't escape. And the verse right before it says, all their bands were broken. Every door was open. You run down here at Burbank. Throw the jail on. They'll run like flies. <laughs> there is something magnetic about believers being happy in the time of distress. And the prisoners heard them. See, they never heard that. You don't hear that in prison. And the prisoners heard them. I suggest there's something magnetic about believers having joy in the time of stress. Yeah. Your neighbors go, whoo, wow. They're giving God glory. Wow. It'll turn heads and change hearts. We've got to learn how to put him first in every arena. Sometimes, have you ever wondered why it's called a sacrifice of praise? Yeah. When you need to do it the most is when you feel like it the least. Mm. Dis, dis, disappointed, disillusioned. But then it's when you need to say, God, do like Job. God, I don't understand this, but even if you slay me, I'm going to trust you. One time Jesus appeared to me and said, Bobby, suppose you missed the whole message of the book of Job. So instantly I knew I had. <laughs> He said, the book of Job is not just about bitter betrayal and unfaithful friends and loss of thing, everything. The book of Job is about the goodness of God. He started out the wealthiest man and ended up seven times more than that. That's, right. That's what the book of Job's about. No matter what kind of trauma and tragedy you face, you'll come through it. God promised you that when you walk through the valley, when you come through the fire, through the flood. You look at your family members and say, we're coming through. We're not going to be in the middle of the mess. God will get us through. Philippians 1, 6 is a great verse. Being confident of this very fact, he that hath begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Christ. Well, we've got to go. It's getting kind of late, and we're coming back tomorrow night at 6. Now, not, not 6.30, 6. six. Right. Now, what do you do? Did we talk about that? No. Let's talk about it. You, you don't mind, do you? No. What do you do? I run specialty medical clinics in jail. Oh, boy, especially medical. How does that work? Are they always reporting sick when they're not sick? Sure. You know what you need? Discernment, isn't it? That, if we get discernment, we can deal with them. Yep. Go, right. no. If you, but isn't that something? How does that? So you get to do medical things in the jail. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? 
fun. That's a mission, isn't it? It is. Jesus said, why didn't you visit me when I was in prison? Lord, you was in prison. Yeah, when? When you do it to the least, you're doing it to him. Isn't that something? Wow. That's a thing, isn't it? So you would have to be classified as a missionary. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I, I would classify that. But that's, that's good. I'm pretty nosy. I'll just keep asking questions. Yeah, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. But that's good. One, th one thing we've got to find out is who the heck are we? We've let circumstances, situation try to identify us. No, you have to let God identify you. Don't you think? He knows more about you than anybody. Remember Israel when they tried to identify themselves when they was in the looking over the giants? Yeah, yeah, we saw the giants and we looked like grasshoppers. It says because they perceived themselves as grasshoppers, the enemy perceived them as grasshoppers. See how you see yourself is how the devil will see you. You'll see yourself bold and brave and very courageous. That's how you are. We need a good dose of Joshua 1, 9. Be bold, be brave, be very courageous. Go do what you're called to do because you're not by yourself. Amen. Rick Joyner always says to me, Bobby, why do you talk to about yourself in the plural? I said, I'm never by myself. He said, I'll never, ever leave you. That means he'll never leave us. He's with us. I'm, I'm telling you, he's with you. And he will make the difference. Yeah. The enemy can tell if he's with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're afraid of him. Yeah. That's right. Well, good. I like this gal right here. What's your name? Got a strapped shirt on? Yes, ma'am. Vida? Frida. Frida? Well, God bless you. I think you're going to be living up to the name Frida. I think freedom's coming. Amen. Freedom to be you, not who somebody said you were. Okay? And I'll tell you what'll happen. Your heart has songs in it, okay? So let those songs out. All right? They've been inside you and they're kind of trapped like gas in a balloon, you know. Let them out, okay? Just sing, write them down on a piece of paper. That's right. She's got a lot of, she said, I got them in me. Well, let them out. Okay? That's right. Get a pen, write them out. That'll be good. This kid here, he thinks, that's the loudest guy I've listened to. Look at him. I like him. What's your name? Oh, my name's Jeremy. Jeremy, God bless you. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve years old. That's a, about one year younger than Daniel was when they captured him and carried him off as a, oh, oh yeah, yeah, huh? <laughs> but he made the choice you're going to make. He said, I am not wrecking myself with what's wrecking them. So you're going to make that same choice. You're not going to wreck yourself with what you see wrecking the friends around you. And remember Daniel, he ended up ran the whole show. Amen. Daniel means my God judges well. So don't let your friends drag you into junk, okay? Amen. Just don't do it. Just say, I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm created for, okay? That'll be good. Daniel, have you you've studied Daniel? All right, we got to go. Really, I mean it this time. <laughs> Uh, yes, you can. I'm talking to you with a little chain around your neck and got a gutter cross. He says to tell you, yes, you can. Say it. Yes, I can. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. All right. That, that's what God wants you to know. The devil's been going well. What makes you think that? I'll tell you, think it because God's already put it in you. I'm telling you, there's a seed of excellence inside of you, and God's not going to allow it to be plucked up. Amen. Some, somebody's invested way too much time, okay? Somebody's invested way too much time in you to let it go to weeds, okay? All right? Say it again. Yes, I can. That's right. I can do all things through Christ who infuses me. So that's good. Come by the book. I, I, uh, my next book is this one. Boy, how do you, I, years ago I wrote a little one called... Uh, uh, Dread Champions, and Bob Jones said, you need to rewrite that, and so we wrote it and put about a hundred and something more pages in here. Dread Champions. God wants to raise up his Dread Champions. Some of the greatest Dread Champions in the Bible are women. That's right. One of my favorite, one of my favorites in the Bible. 
I'm telling you, I like these guys that one guy killed 800 guys in a bean field with a spear. Wow! Some won't even fight for their family. This dude's out there fighting in a bean field. <laughs> but some of the greatest champions are women. One of them is Esther. Amen. Esther said, I am going to do my commission from God even if it kills me. I'm going to do what God gave me life to do even if it kills me. They, they, sweet it, they made it sweet in the Bible. It says, if I perish, I perish. You know? But anyway, I'll give you this just because you can, okay? Come by and you, I'll sign it for you, okay? All right, let's, let's pray and then we'll get out of here. I'm about this far from dancing with you. I'm pretty serious about that. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. Hey, come here. It's good. It's going to be all right. I won't swing you. I won't swing you around too hard. Now, don't you jump up and hit me behind the ear. Okay? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You're a warrior and it's worth it, okay? See there? Yeah. Mm. Isn't that good? That's good. God bless you. Yeah. She's a warrior and it's worth it. Okay. Maybe you're here and you say, now, Bobby, uh, I'm a believer, but I hadn't been living like it. Well, you're one of the most miserable people in this room. The Bible said a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. The devil will entice you and then badger you with it the rest of your life. What you need to do is you need to come to Jesus and say, Lord, I confess my sin. If you'll do that, he said he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said he will put our sin as far as the east is from the west never to remember it again. Don't let a past failure keep you from embracing the victories of the future. Amen. Okay? Don't let the pains of the past stop you. Yes, what you did was wrong, but we've got a fountain filled with blood. Amen. And sinners plunge beneath its flood lose all their guilt and shame. Amen. You listen, you don't have to confess it to me nor to Brother Joe. You confess it to Jesus. He's our high priest. And I promise you, he's faithful and just. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess it. Now don't try to cover it up. It'll just grow. It'll mushroom. You'll trip over it every day. Just confess it and forsake it. I promise you, you'll find mercy. Isaiah 1, 18 says, come on now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be as white as snow. We can't fall so far that the grace of God can't pick us up. And I, I, I know I'm talking to someone, but if you'll just come clean with him, it'll be a bright new day for you. It'll be as though it never happened. Years ago, uh, my, both of my boys worked for us now, but when they were little, I got them etch -a sketches you know, this little old thing you can make all kind of marks and then pull the thing up and go, and it was a clean shape, slate again. God is offering every one of us in this room and those watching an Etch-A-Sketch. You can pull it up, repent of it, and it's a new slate. They can make the biggest mess and just, and it's gone. You say, well, Bobby, you don't know what all God does. He knows all of our faults and failures and still loves us. Amen. Wow. Amen. The Bible said if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. Amen. Don't you let the past block the future, okay? Amen. Even if you, don't, if you don't come forward to this altar, you can make your bed an altar. Amen. You can make their room an altar where you just do business with God. And maybe you say, well, Bobby, I, I don't think I got any sin in my heart. Ask God to search you. That's what it says, Psalms 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and try me. See if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me, Lord, in a way that's eternal and everlasting. Sometimes we can shroud it over so deep, excuse it away so long, till we act like it's not even there. But it's there. And I want you to just confess it, okay? And forsake it, God will forgive you. You'll find mercy. Aren't you glad? Yes. His mercies are what? New every? Yeah, great is his faithfulness. Well, good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, give me five, okay? How old are you? 
11 years old. She just goes, maybe he won't say anything to me. I think y'all are beautiful. That's what I think. You, I don't know about. Yes, I do. Yeah. One day he'll play baseball. They'll say to you, he's so fast and agile. Okay? Mark that down. They'll pay for his college if you'll listen to me. Okay? One day you'll play baseball. You'll play a shortstop, and they'll say, he's so agile. and Yeah, that, that'll be good. He'll be swift and agile. You, what about me? Well, what about you? <laughs> what do you want to do? Whatever you want to do, the Lord said, if we'll set our heart to it, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those that are walking it right. So, really. But uh, isn't that something? One time I said the same thing to a preacher's boy, and the preacher got mad. He said, Bobby, you know all little boys want to be baseball players. I said, yeah. And then years later, the boy was real good in high school, peewee, uh, college, uh, Sandlot Leagues. Then the, professor, the professionals called him up. So his dad called him and said, Bobby, you're not going to believe it. I said, no, David, you're the one that didn't believe it. <laughs> isn't that something? So believe it, okay? You, here's a good verse about kids. You ready? Psalms 112, verse 2. Psalms 112, verse 2 said, The offspring of the upright will be mighty in the earth. Amen. That means your kids will be mighty. You want another verse about children? Uh, here it is anyway. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4 said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your descendants, and they will spring up like willows by a fertile river. Amen. You're hungry and thirsty, your children prosper. You get bitter and eat bitter fruit, your children's teeth will get set on edge. I said I was quitting, so I am. I'll see y'all at the book table. Brother Joe, <laughs> God bless you, man. We'll, we'll get back there. I don't even know where the book table is, but if, if I was prophetic, I could find it, wouldn't I? God bless you. <laughs>